great race, a very exciting race, which was of course the Belgium Grand Prix. And here is our exclusive reaction, of course, from our home sweet home over here, as we just returned obviously from the Paris 2024 Olympics. And we will tell you how we've seen this uh, amazing race, especially very, very strategic race uh, from the perspective of Ferrari's biggest fans. So are you ready? I'm sure you are. Well, you guys, you know, so it started off a magnificent level. Uh, we will tell you the reaction. We will tell you how I think we definitely, definitely uh, should have won and uh, won in the one-two fashion, just like the Mercedes-Benz did. Uh, and obviously on this beautiful red routine, I might be able then show you what it means as we are heading into that summer break. Obviously, you know, now for the real F1 drivers, the summer break is, uh, you know, uh, quickly, quickly closing. But yeah, I have to say, this was a, a great race. Uh, you know, this is exactly what Formula one should be about it started off with the qualifying thankfully first up and gotten that uh, 10 place great penalty because obviously had a really good pace in qualifying but hey you know you can't just you know take the new engine components and thing you know it will give you half an hour uh, half a second advantage over a single lap and then it won't go uh, penalized because obviously uh, just like i found out when obviously you saw it in a race it's actually quite difficult now to overtake at spa for whatever reason i think it's mostly you know because it's just so high speed especially going you know out of uh, the or rouge uh, and yeah obviously you know it's a really really difficult when you're already reaching the high speed to go e even faster you know and then pretty much there's no other real opportunity unless you send it unless you're able to follow the, the car behind which is strange because it's a driver's favorite great circuit and we have to sell we have to say that we celebrated a great pole position by Charles Leclerc fantastic you know to put it in changeable conditions on pole position obviously we were you know just 200 kilometers down south in France so so we knew that it was, uh, you know, uh, always uh, not pouring down with rain, uh, but it always you had a little drops of the rain here and there. So the track was done, but he really delivered. But again, it was like, okay, you started on pole position 25, 26 times, right? You know, but you haven't even won 10 races. Can you win it this time? What do you think? Well, if Lewis Hamilton was in that Ferrari, we would be celebrating a one-two because, hey, uh, you know, Lewis Hamilton did a great job at the start, you know, getting ahead of, obviously, the future Ferrari driver, getting ahead of Perez. Perez, once again, you know, showed that he doesn't have much of a race craft. Leclerc held it well, but once the DRC, you know, was open, basically couldn't hold Hamilton back. But then uh, you can see that everybody opted for the same strategy, right? But because, you know, everybody was like within one second of uh, one another, it was actually, I found it very exciting, you know, uh, even though obviously you cannot overtake easily, you know, what, what can happen is that if somebody like George Russell decides to go for one pit stop, then all of a sudden you can win the race relatively easily, right? If, of course, you can make the tires work and I think Sainz had a great great opportunity and I thought by lap 12 it looked great for Ferrari being in one two because Leclerc was able to stay second you know, obviously you know the, the Red Bull wouldn't touch him and uh, the McLarens were really really strong and that was exactly what we needed right Sainz was uh, you know basically right behind Russell who won the race and then got disqualified I just, I just don't know about this because I did, didn't obviously know us I was in the Olympic spirit and uh, you know that was for the underweight car, so you had to take into that. Uh, you had to take that into account when you were only doing the one stop, so you wouldn't go uh, underweight. But yeah. Uh you know, I thought the, the race pace was uh, pretty good. Obviously, you know, Hamilton probably had a bit more of a pace. You know, first up, and was kind of stuck in the DRS train, so that was fantastic. And nobody was really making a progress, but, uh, you know, it really did matter when you stop. Again, remember, Spa has that long seven kilometer, uh, you, you know, long lap. So basically, uh, you know, that undercut can be very powerful, but so can be the overcut. And this is what I didn't understand. Because in lots of the races, if the tire degradation is not that drastic, and if you don't put in a new tire, and immediately you're not two, three, four, or five seconds faster, like like it was for, obviously famously in Singapore 2019, right? When you stop and then you know all of a sudden you have a huge tire advantage, you know it will be. What you have to understand is that, of course, yeah, they will catch you, but it will probably be difficult to overtake if you don't have, for example, that outright, you know, two, three second advantage, which you can get with a softer compound and obviously fresher rubber, right? And this is exactly what happened, you know, you could see that science was doing relatively well, apart from one excursion, and on that 20, once pretty much all of the front runners but science who started on a hard tire stopped, 
all of the others switch from medium to the hot tire. I don't know why they like to use the hard tire, by the way. When I do the racing, I always prefer mediums and softs whenever possible, but that's why you know, I can obviously you know, keep the softs from qualifying. So that's very important. Then you could see, right? So you basically you know, did, did have you know, Leclerc there, right? Then you had Sainz you know, on lap 12. And obviously Leclerc did have to cover you know, Hamilton, right? And especially the guys behind. But I thought uh, it was very interesting what he said on the radio. He said, look, if we get him undercut, why not stay out? Exactly, right? Because he could have stayed out, easily pit on lap 16, 18, 20, doesn't really matter. Switch to the hard tire, make it last to the end. Think about the math, 44 laps. If he can, uh, if he can make that medium last 16, 18 laps, let's say 17 laps, okay? You know, that really leaves you uh, with, you know, doing the, the remaining 27 laps on a half. Definitely, definitely feasible, right? And that's how we could have won the race. Same with Sainz. He was first, you know, Hamilton was, you know, two, three seconds behind, but hey, you know, uh, I mean, if we only doing one stop, you know, then you're basically fighting him for, for the victory, for the position, and it would be good to see if he could actually overtake him or not, right? Because you could see that when Hamilton called Russell at the end of the race, then he couldn't overtake him easily. So that would be very, very important, right? So Sainz could have easily stayed instead of uh, lapping at, uh, instead of pitting on lap 20 and then doing just a, a seven, a, you know, a lap, uh, stint uh, on a medium, which doesn't make any sense, you know, instead of staying until lap, uh, let's say 24, and then go on a medium, do the 20 laps, or go, uh, you know, to lap 26, right, maybe you lose a couple of positions, but then you're on a medium, the others still have to stop, I thought that was a really great chance, and I'm a little bit disappointed that Ferrari didn't take this opportunity, because you just need to put in a bit more fuel, it will make a big of a difference, maybe only 2-3 seconds, you know, because the difference, for example, like that Russell was disqualified, right, for being, you know, I think 1.5 kilo underweight, it's only 0.05 seconds, right, so uh, that means that it's only about like 2 seconds in a race distance, and uh, you could see, for example, that Leclerc finished 8 seconds, you know, behind the leader, so, I mean, why not take the chance so i was a bit disappointing but overall you know the, the race was really good obviously at the end i thought hey will hamilton overtake russell but i thought it was telling that mercedes wasn't celebrating so much especially the top bosses like uh, total wolf you know russell's victory i think they knew the disqualification was coming justified future ferrari driver lewis hamilton you won uh, the, the two races over here, you know, we're actually quite happy for him, you know, PS3 then over to Leclerc, obviously had a tire advantage, but Charles did a great job keeping first up and keeping Norris behind, and uh, Sainz obviously finishing uh, 10 seconds behind Norris, that was good, and Perez obviously was nowhere, uh, even had to then stop, uh, you know, so he would get the fastest lap, but overall, very, very exciting race, if he got on the strategy right, I believe Leclerc definitely could have been on for victory, uh, you know, he was well ahead of Russell, for example, right, if he ran the same strategy, and I think Sainz could have made it at least onto the podium and it would have been great for Scuderia Ferrari. So, as it finished over here, let's uh, take a look. It's not, not really a bad result, but obviously, as Ferraris, we need to do better. So, we can't wait to have uh, Hamilton, you know, come into the Ferrari. It will be interesting if he brought some of the strategies, uh, strategic masterminds. So, this is how it finished, but obviously, Russell got disqualified for being underweight. So, great victory by Hamilton in the end, just 0.6 seconds from Piastri, his fifth win here in Spa-Francorchamps and, you know, well-deserved. I think he controlled the race and there's not, not much, you know, we can say about that. For uh, the Drivers' Championship, so let's uh, take a look over here. You can see first up and for him it was uh, fine because he finished ahead of Norris. So he probably, you know, just once he got stuck in the DRS train, he just stayed there, 277 points. Uh, the rest of them don't even have uh, 200 points, like uh, Norris 199, uh, Leclerc 177, then Piastri 167, 162 for Sainz, then uh, obviously Hamilton 150 being the strongest uh, over the last uh, three races, so he's really making up a lot of ground, and obviously, you know, the, the rest, you know, Russell with Perez, you know, they lost quite a lot of ground, and then we have Alonso with Stroke, who are much, much, much further back, because Aston is not competitive. Now, let's take a look at the Constructors' Championship, so that's really heating up very, very nicely over here so uh, check it out you know Red Bull leading with 408 points but uh, poor performances by Perez if first up and not winning McLaren 366 points really really catching them over here and you can see only 42 points difference and obviously it, it is further 21 uh, points 
points so that's 63 points we are behind red bull as good area ferrari i think we can do it you know i think after the summer break especially after the italian grand prix and then baku singapore coming up you know we could even be leading the championship or be in contention mercedes benz this will hurt them the disqualification 266 points i think that will keep them away from us for the rest of the season so uh, you guys over here, this is how it uh, looks like. So uh, very, very exciting, wasn't it? And look at you, Russell. Okay, I guess they didn't get the briefing right. But yeah, that was a really good drive, especially, you know, he called it. And uh, that's how the, the drivers should be, right? Uh, so over here, uh, again, thank you very much uh, to, for watching this race reaction. Uh, and now you can truly enjoy the summer of 2024. Uh, you know, I have to say, you know, the F1 20, 2024 is very, very exciting. And, you know, I cannot wait for the final 10 races. It would be great if we had a big, big fight in the Drivers' Championship, but the Constructors' Championship is wide open. It's very exciting. We had a lot of really good races. What F1 should be about overtaking, you know, thinking about the strategy and make the best man win. This was the Andersvalling Sun Champion, the Ferrari's biggest fan, reporting on the driver's favorite, obviously, the Belgium Grand Prix at Spa Frankfurt Jobs, where we spent our high school years. I had a great time there. I was happy that it was a beautiful sunny day. It looks so much better than when it's rainy, as it usually is. And, of course, we will be back in our traditional sun within 24 hours as the race in Sandburg and then Monza obviously coming up will finish and we will let you know how great Ferrari did after we start winning again let's go for some Ferrari